Today I'm talking about osteoarthritis in the hand. There are two main types of osteoarthritis. The first is rheumatoid arthritis, which is an inflammatory condition, and the symptoms, pathology and treatment for that condition is quite complicated and is not the purpose of the talk today. The second type is osteoarthritis. And osteoarthritis occurs as a result of wear and tear of the cartilage in the joint. Now, the cartilage in the joint is the lining of the joint that allows friction-free movement and allows the joint to glide smoothly and comfortably. When you lose that cartilage, then you lose that glide, you get pain, you get extra bone formation around the joint, which is called osteophytes, and that restricts the joint movement. So the symptoms of osteoarthritis that you get as a result of this loss of cartilage is a decreased range of movement and pain. The degree of pain can depend on the degree of arthritis, and some patients can manage with the pain of arthritis and others they find it too difficult to manage. So if you have got arthritis symptoms in the hands it is often diagnosed by an x-ray and it is shown upon x-ray and it tends to involve the joints of the hand um, in a specific pattern. Now the commonest area to get osteoarthritis in the hand is the base of the thumb the calf metacarpal joint of the thumb. Another very common place is the joint at the end of the finger, which is the distal interphalangeal joint. However, you can get arthritis in other joints in the hand, the proximal joint, the metacarpophalangeal joint, and the joints around the wrist. From a treatment point of view, there are various options. The first line of treatment for arthritis is what I would call conservative treatment. What that means is, is it's treatment without an operation. So this would involve splinting for certain types of arthritis in the joint. So for example, if it is this joint here at the base of the thumb, splinting would be part of my primary treatment initially. Other options are analgesia, so painkillers taken either when you're going to do the activity or as a baseline analgesia if you have pain all the time with it. The other option is activity modification. So for example, if you have pain at the base of your thumb when you're doing activities such as taking off tight bottle tops, then you can get KitchenAid to help you with that. There are options of a steroid injection into the joints to try and calm down the pain of the arthritis. Now, the effect of the steroid injections depends on the degree of arthritis. So, if you have a lot of arthritis change, hardly any cartilage left in the joint, then giving a steroid injection is unlikely to last a long time because the steroid calms down the inflammation associated with the wear and tear of the joint, but it is the wear and tear of the joint that is driving that inflammation and driving that pain, and so therefore the steroid injection will wear out, will wear off. The time it takes to wear off is not known. You could get two weeks relief from a steroid injection, six months relief from a steroid injection. It's not possible to know how much relief you're going to get until you get the injection. But it's not suitable in all cases. So if we have the situation where we have tried conservative treatment and it is still a problem with regard to pain and loss of function, then there is the option of surgery. Now there are different surgical pathways you can take um, with arthritis in the joint. The most reliable way of getting rid of pain in an arthritic joint is to stiffen the joint or fuse the joint completely. So you effectively get rid of the joint that is painful by fusing it. 
and you fuse the bone each side across the joint. Now, when you fuse a joint, you stop it from moving. So therefore, you're sacrificing loss of sac sacrificing movement for release relief of pain. Now, in some joints, that loss of movement is not that inhibiting. So, for example, fusion of the distal interphalangeal joint, the joint at the end of the finger, although it does move quite a lot, you do not notice much of a restriction at all from having the loss of movement of that joint if it is fused. So, from a treatment point of view, fusion of the distal interphalangeal joint is a good operation. However, once you start going further down the finger to the proximal interphalangeal joint and the metacarpophalangeal joint, you notice more the lack of movement from the fusion with regard to a functional point of view. So for example, if this joint here is fused in a bent position, then when you straighten the hand out, it is going to be in a, it's going to be in a bent position. And when you make a fist, it is going to be still in a bent position and not make a full fist. And that is more debilitating than a distal interphalangeal joint that is fused either straight or with a slight bend to it. The other alternative to a joint fusion is a joint replacement. So with that operation, you take out the, the joint that's arthritic and you replace it with a prosthetic joint um, which is made of either metal or plastic or silicon or a mixture of um, different materials. Now with joint replacements in the hand they tend not to improve the movement in that joint so if you have a stiff joint and you do a joint replacement then a joint replacement is unlikely to improve that movement. It is quite likely to get rid of the pain in most cases but that relief of pain is not as reliable as a fused joint. The other thing you have to bear in mind with a joint replacement is they're not as robust as a fused joint and they do not last as long as say for example if you compared it with a hip or a knee replacement which tends to have a, a longevity in, um, in the sense that they, you can have a hip and a knee replacement and they will last you for many, many years. Whereas with a joint replacement in the hand, the amount of years they last is significantly less. So it is most likely that if you have a joint replacement in the hand or the fingers, then that means that it will fail at some point and you'll have to have a second operation. Whereas if you fuse joint, that is the final procedure. The joint is fused and you do not need anything else doing to it. So the third option for arthritis is to remove the bone, uh, remove the bone in the joint. So for example, the commonest treatment for arthritis at the base of the thumb is to remove the bone at the base of the thumb. Now in this particular case, you preserve movement and in most cases you get good relief of pain. However, not all patients get complete relief of pain. Some patients will still have some ongoing pain after that operation, but they are a minority. However, if after an operation of removing the bone at the base of the thumb, you have ongoing pain, it's then very difficult to do anything about it. That leads me on to whether you should have surgery for arthritis or not. Now, whether you should have surgery or not depends on your symptoms. Results of surgery aren't 100% guaranteed. And so therefore, if you failed the conservative treatment, then you have to look at surgery being a last resort procedure. So if you are managing with conservative treatment, adapting and coping with the levels of discomfort that you've got and managing to do what you need to do, then it's probably best leaving things alone. But if you're not, 
then it is reasonable to consider surgery. So in summary for osteoarthritis of the hand, the treatment of the condition needs to be conservative initially, if possible. You have to bear in mind if you go down the surgical route that a fusion operation stops the joint from moving. If you go down a joint replacement route, then they're not going to last forever. And if you go down the route of taking the bone out from the base of the thumb, it is not 100% reliable. So when you present to your um, treated consultant with osteoarthritis of the hand, they should be able to explain to you the options for that particular joint that is involved and the pros and cons of what type of procedure that that you can use to help with the arthritis of that particular joint.